before we even get started, he says, uh, man, you want a 50-50? I said, yeah, sure I do. What is it? He said, it's what I drink. I said, okay, do I get to know the ingredients? He goes, yeah, man. It's half bowls gin, half coffee, and a bunch of sugar. And I went, okay. You know, it's like three in the afternoon, so he hands me this thing, this bomb in a cup, you know. And he goes, okay, what'd you say your name was again? I said, Mike, Mike Post. Oh, yeah, you're real young, right? I said, well, yeah, I'm 24. And he said, yeah, you're really young. I said, yeah, I am. He, I said, can we... Can I show you what I think you ought to do? What do you think I ought to do? And I said, a medley. No, man, I don't do no medleys. I said, well, Ray, why don't you listen to what I propose, what I put together, and then tell me, you know, I'm an idiot after that. And, of course, I sing terribly, but, but if there was one thing I had done, it's my homework, and I, I had every lick, every key. I, I knew exactly what he did because I had studied it for a lot of years, and I just had him cold, you know. So I sat down and I, you know, started. And it wasn't just, you know, Can't Stop Loving You, Georgia, you know, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't all the sort of, there was some old stuff like walk about and talk about, tell the world about you, tell the truth, you know, couple, some of the older stuff that wasn't uh, quite so popish. And, um, and I guess it went through about, eight or nine songs or pieces of songs in about 11 minutes. And so I finished it. And, and while I was going through it, even though I, you know, my nickname growing up was Blind Boy Bagel because I, you know, my version of the blues is just ridiculous, but at least my heart's in the right place. And uh, <laughs> about halfway through, he's rocking and smacking and doing his, all of his stuff, you know. So I thought, hey, man, maybe he really likes what I'm doing here, you know. So when it gets over, he goes, okay, man, I'll do that. I went, well, that's great. That's great. I said, this is going to be terrific. You know, this is going to be really good. And, you know, youthful enthusiasm and all. And, and even though he was my idol, I, for some reason, I just wasn't afraid of him. I wasn't, I knew all the stories and I knew all the jazz about it how brutal he could be to musicians. But I, I, I sensed that he was one of those guys that if you knew your gig and you were confident about your part of the job, you know, that he would respect that. And that it's when he smelled weakness, you know, he was like, you know, new meat to carve. <laughs> and, I, and I had known that from some guys that had been in his band and all. So at any rate, so I... Okay, we go back in. Hey, we got this together. We tell the producers everybody's happy as hell because Ray's happy. And I said, okay, Ray, now look, you know, we really want to rehearse this and really have this down. All right, man, all right. And, of course, Ray being Ray never did get around to rehearsing. You know, it's just the week of the, of the actual taping, he just was MIA. You know, I don't know what he was doing or where he was in his life and what was happening. But he was, he just wasn't around. And but he, I call him by phone and we talk a couple of times. I, oh yeah, man, I got your stuff. I got your little. I'm, in those days, there weren't even cassettes. It was a little reel to reel on a little battery op operated reel to reel. I sent that over. Yeah, I listen to tape. Don't worry, I know all the transitions. I got everything, everything covered. And he did. So he shows up, and, and I didn't know what I was doing. You know, they set this thing up as a TV show in a TV studio at NBC, and the band was just straight across from me, not wrapped around me, just straight across. There's a big light shining right in my monitor, what I'm supposed to look at to be conducting, and I wasn't worth a hill of beans as a conductor at the time anyway. Long story short, he shows up at 9 in the morning, okay? Going to rehearse with the band, going to do this. They, they have nothing but technical snafus all day long. They keep them waiting in a small dressing room for eight and a half hours. We're on our second audience, third audience. We've had to keep bringing audiences in and back, and they keep taking time to do this and time to do that, comedy sketches, Andy's music, blah, blah. They finally bring Ray out. They set him up 40 yards away from me in a piano with a little speaker by him. I got a band all the way over here it's 
the worst situation you can possibly have. It sounds like shit in there. Everything's awful. It's horrible. And he starts. He's so angry when he gets out there, it's like, whoa, this is, this is unbelievable. And I can remember standing there with all the musicians that I had hired from the record business that never do variety shows because they don't pay enough, but I'd gotten them to do it because my account as a record guy was big and they were my friends and I was the first studio musician to come from that side of the glass to the production side of the glass, blah, blah, blah. So I had all these guys there, you know, Jimmy Gordon on drums and I mean, great players, Vince DeRosa on French horn, you know, really A players. And it, I can remember that I started to sweat and the sweat got in my eyes and I couldn't tell whether it was tears or what was happening. But here's my idol behind me, 40 yards away from me, just chewing me out and going, I like the arrangements fine, son, but the tempos are wrong. And if you band, watch me, don't watch him in front of the audience, in front of Andy, in front of my, the musicians. I mean, I, he just, just tore me apart. And I went, whatever you want, Ray, no problem whatsoever. You know, whatever, whatever you, whatever makes you feel good, let's just get it done. And, and we did get it done. And it was Ray Charles music and it was a pretty well hung piece of, of business and a way to present it. But I was so shell shocked afterward. He was so torp. It, we didn't get out till four in the morning, nine, nine at night till nine in the morning till four in the morning a.m. the next day. And man, we were just wrecked. So I. I went home, I sat in front of TV and just watched TV the whole weekend and went in on Monday and quit. And I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a rock and roll record producer, arranger. I don't need this television baloney. This is jive, it's coming through little speakers. Andy came in and said, no, no, no. You write really good arrangements. I, you're my guy. What will it take to get you to stay? And I said, well, you hired me because of the way my records sound. Let's go pre-record the whole show in a, in a record studio. And the producer said, no, no, we need to know. We need to see it between dress rehearsal and air to see what the audience reacts. I said, you people don't know anything about music. You're comedy writers. I said, Andy and I are the only guys that know anything about music that are even in this team. I, I, you know what? We know what's going to work. And Andy just looked at me and said, he's right. And we were the first variety television show to completely pre-record the tracks, and then everybody sang live to that. And during the concert section, when you could see the band, we were finger syncing. So it worked good. And I just sort of licked my wounds about Ray Charles, and I thought, ah, you know, okay, at least I got to meet him, at least I got to work with him. It didn't work out so good. Who knew where he was at in his life at that particular time? Cut. Now, about eight months later, the phone rings, and I happened to pick it up in my office out back of my house. I picked up, hello, uh, is this Michael? And of course, I knew the voice right away. I went, yeah, it sure is. And he goes, Star C. I said, Ray, how you doing? And he goes, good. He said, hey, look, uh, 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 that night uh, was rough. Uh, uh, you know, they kept me waiting a long time. I was maybe, I don't know, but a lot of people saw that show, said it was great. A lot of people, a lot of people been telling me that show was really, really good. And I said, well, I don't know. I said, they, they had it set up so bad. I, I've since redone everything. We pre-recorded everything. He said, no, 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 man, I ain't mad at you. And I, said, I said, well, thank you, Ray. He said, hey, listen. Uh, 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 yeah, Ray. He says, uh, would you... Uh, do some arranging for me. And I said, well, Ray, and me being, you know, who I am, uh, I said, Ray, I don't arrange for anybody I don't produce. Silence. I said, of course, there's two exceptions to that. He said, who are the exceptions? I said, Aretha Franklin and this guy named Ray Charles. And he goes, man, get over here. I'm building you a 50-50. <laughs> And I said, oh, God. I said, I'm on my way, you know. I'm, you know, The man snapped his fingers, you know, I'm on my way. So that's how, I, that's how we met. That's a long story, but that's how we met. 